Welcome back to Switch to Linux. <laughs> we did it. We did it, folks. The year of the Linux desktop is here. 5% Linux desktop use in the United States. Yeah, baby. Linux is on the roll. All right, a little bit uh, fun here, but I did want to talk a little bit about this and uh, just spend a few minutes discussing a few ideas I had here. The first question we have here is uh, what caused Linux to jump up so much? Uh, and I want to say that there's probably three general reasons why people might be looking at Linux. Uh, I think one of the early ones, now if we could get some statistics about the age of the people using Linux, that might tell us a little bit about this. But we have three significant things happening right now that I think could be driving this. One of these is the upcoming Windows 10 end of life. There have been not just my channel, but there have been some news articles circling around as well talking about the Windows 10 end of life circumstance and that Linux is a potential solution for some people to try. And since uh, I think it's estimated like, was it like 30 or 40% of Windows 10 computers right now cannot run Windows 11, but are otherwise still good functioning pieces of hardware that many people would be frustrated having to buy a new computer in this era. I mean, we have the tariffs are causing some things to go up. Of course, those will probably cause prices to spike right about the time you need a new computer. You have a lot of your, your big warnings coming on to your Windows computer. You have people are actually still buying more things on credit cards than they have in years past due to inflation, although that has come down a little bit, but not a whole lot. But I think some of it could very well be that Windows 10 will reach the end of life and not everybody wants to go out and run out and buy a new computer. Some people simply can't. And some people look at their budget and go, we can't afford groceries. You think I can go to the store and buy a new computer? And, you know, the cheapest stuff. I mean, I've seen some computers in the stores recently for as little as three, four hundred bucks. Those aren't necessarily very good. If you have a decent computer running Windows 10, I would not trade it in for a three or $400 Windows 11 computer just to get the minimum specs. And to get something that's even comparable, you're probably looking at, uh, at a $1,000 or so computer, which is problematic. Now, the second reason I think is PewDiePie. We cannot reject the fact that his two videos on Linux uh, and open source and DIY technology stuff. Those two videos in the last month, I actually I hadn't looked at the, at the numbers in what, three or four weeks since he did those. At that time, those two videos combined 60 million worldwide views. And so that's not a ton in terms of the population of the United States. It is a chunk. I mean, if all of that was United States, you know, that's like 10% or so. What's our current population? I don't know. But a large number of people potentially saw those. Now, if a lot of younger people, uh, younger than me, like maybe 20-somethings or so, are the ones experimenting with Linux now, we can probably say that might be the PewDiePie effect. I'm not sure. Now, the next one is people are genuinely getting frustrated with AI being pushed everywhere. The big tech companies, if you listen to big tech companies and all the marketing and the advertising, you wouldn't believe that, you wouldn't think that, but it is true. It is very true. People are becoming frustrated with the AI being forced upon us at every single turn. And in light of that, I think that more people are coming out and and they're just, they're looking for something that is not going to attempt to automate everything because, okay, you turn on your computer, you're already a little out of your comfort zone and then you want to sit down and you do something and your computer automatically does something for you. Like, what just happened? And then you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And it causes a lot of people who are not your big tech enthusiasts or not super tech savvy, it causes them to sit down and go, I feel uncomfortable with this. So this is what big tech companies have to remember right now. You are making your user base uncomfortable. And the more you make them uncomfortable, the more problematic that is going to be. Now, there are a few issues with this. Let me actually cover my benefits first. I have some benefits first. The huge benefit of switching to Linux, Linux is getting easier. So I think that more people that are trying Linux are going to stick with Linux as long as they're trying a good mainline distribution. Now, there was that one Linux distribution for about 
three, two or three weeks, everyone was talking about, this Microsoft engineer created this Linux distribution, it's amazing. Guys, it was hot garbage, okay? And it was a single Chinese developer, yes, who worked for Microsoft, okay? It's a Chinese distribution by a single developer that did not do what it promised to do. It did not containerize apps like it promised to containerize apps. It did not have automatic updates like it promised to do automatic updates. Maybe he has some of those issues fixed. I'm not saying that's a horrible distribution. What I'm saying is as people are switching to Linux, if they're hearing more about one man bands, they're going to get more frustrated because one man bands tends to not work as well. There've been some exceptions. Farron OS is an excellent exception. Uh, that worked very, very well and gained a lot of mainstream status with a very dedicated and very young developer. Um, so there was that. But if people are truly sticking to the hard, tried and true Linux distributions, these Linux distributions are getting better and better. And so if you're using a Linux Mint, even in an Ubuntu, a Fedora, um, Oh, there's a number, of, there's, there's a few other really good ones. If you're sticking with one of these mainstream distributions with a development team that has a long, long track record that is doing proper beta testing, that is actually delivering on its promises, those distributions are working and so more people will stick with it. You pull in a Linux Mint, you go, wait, you mean I just got my computer and my computer didn't automatically do anything, it just waited for me to do an input. Wow. And it's easy to find stuff and it's not being cute, it's not being fancy, it's just sitting here. Wow! I mean, this is, this is strange stuff, folks. This is strange stuff. I think the next major benefit is there's a lack of automation. And that's, we've already touched on this. But if your computer is constantly automating itself for you, this is somewhat of a problematic thing. And so the lack of the automation is indeed quite refreshing. And so we want to keep that in mind. And then the next one I want to look at is uh, most services people use these days are web-based. So we are moving into this web-based world. I'm not a huge fan of it, but if nearly every service you're using is all web-based, Linux is going to work perfectly fine because all those web browsers work on Linux. Hey, you can use Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge on Linux if you are so inclined to do so. So there are some tremendous benefits with this shift over into, into Linux. Now there are a few issues that will pop up. One of the first issues is it, it is a culture shock of a better time in the past. You look back at your computer and you go, whoa, wait, what? I have control of my computer again. I actually have to save files on my computer and they're physically here. They're not mystically, magically transported to somebody's cloud. They're not all constantly nagging me to save something in someone else's cloud because that stuff does indeed frustrate a number of people. I know as I'm going around and uh, teaching at some of the writers' conferences or even attending some of the writers' conferences as I'm doing these things, then um, what, what I, I see a lot of people uh, and it's particularly middle-aged or older people, they do not like all this cloud stuff. They are frustrated with the cloud stuff and they're constantly mad at Microsoft Office. I'm just, hey, try LibreOffice. Hey, try LibreOffice. I hope I got like 10 more users to LibreOffice at the last course I taught. Uh, that would be kind of cool. But Linux does give you that culture shock of a better time in the past. Now, some applications are gonna need to change. You might have your favorite cool, cute little application you just can't use anymore. That can be a little bit of a problematic thing, so keep that in mind. Uh, so that is potentially one of the issues. You will have to get used to using files again and stuff like that. And the last issue is you may have to relearn controlling your computer. Some people have gotten so used to automation. So as I was working on this slideshow for camp this week and the, the chaplain's like, hey, can you use this one particular song? I'm like, I'll see if I can find it. And I couldn't find a way to, to actually get it even from online. And so I'm like, you know, can anybody get this? And, and you know, nobody knows even what an MP3 is like. Oh, I finally got it. It's on my Apple Music now. I can get it to you if you have Apple Music. I, that's not going to help. It's not going to help. We need to relearn how to control our computers, relearn how to have all of access to all of our files. These are things that are important that we need to do. And so I want to conclude with just a few things. What can Linux 
uh, distributions and promoters of Linux like myself do? What can we do to help in this? Because I think it will be good if we get a lot more than 5%. Uh, desktop usage in the United States. Number one is we need to stop pushing these these one man one man band shows of Linux distributions. We need to stop pushing weird, cute things like, oh, this guy has this new distribution. Can we just slow it down already? I, I mean, I get that you're enthused about Linux and that you want to have your own distribution, which is basically Ubuntu with a different skin and three different applications. Can you please not release that as a new distribution? Just please. Um, I'm not saying I want only one distribution, but you know, we have like, I'd say we have 20 or 30 good distributions that are mainline that work well. I think that's probably good. Let's push the mainline distributions that work well and are well maintained and keep a larger user base behind those so we have more bug reports and uh, get more issues done. We have to push the mainline distributions that are better maintained. Next, we have to, to assure um, we have to assure proper beta testing that things go go well the way they are. In other words, uh, we're, and I commented on this about, I don't know, five years ago, Ubuntu started to get bad when they stopped doing big releases around beta tests. And I think fewer people beta tested it. They got fewer notes back. And as a result, what ended up happening is that the distribution got worse and worse and worse. And we need to have a better beta testing platform in order to make sure that things do work well out of the box. The next thing is we need to keep talking about the growth of the Linux desktop. The more people learn about the Linux desktop, the more people are going to be inclined to use it. And this will actually work out best because if, if we have a, a large number of people using it, guess what? A certain, let's say 15, 20% of people start using Linux and let's say 90% of them are gamers, AAA titles are going to port all those games over here and they're going to work and they're going to solve the anti-cheat issue on Linux. Okay, these are things that the, that are going to happen. This is why I think NVIDIA saw the writing on the wall and started open sourcing code because more of the Linux guys like me were saying, don't buy NVIDIA, just go AMD. And that hurt them in the long run. So they're like, hey, maybe we should actually open source our code and get it into the Linux kernel. Ha, huh, shocking. And then, you know, the growth will come back up. And so we need to have more people because it gives developers more incentive and motivation to push their software on Linux, and that can help us in the long run. So let me know your thoughts about all those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy brand new switching to Linux.